guys, Bitmaster Zor here, back with another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to use DirectX to pull webcam images and uh, make a steady stream. This is going to be a lot better than the uh, traditional little component one that I showed you guys before. Um, but the problem with using components to do stuff like this is that if you use a component or, say, another library that's, you know, drag and droppable to the main form, you're at the mercy of whoever wrote it. And uh, I don't like that. So in this video tutorial, we're going to be going the extra step, and we're actually going to use uh, a library that was created by another gentleman uh, that uses DirectX to directly pull uh, the webcam driver list and be able to help us lock on the one and pull the image. And it's very basic. Um, all you need is a couple of files. Um, I'm going to open this up here real quick, guys. So we're going to paste those files in here. They're vframes and vsample. So at this point, we have the necessary files in the root of our Delphi project. Now we just have to include uh, one of them in our uses statement because this one includes this one automatically. So in order to do this, all we have to do is uh, simply go to the top of the code. Just to be safe though, guys, I am going to go ahead and just include both. So frames and the sample. And there you have it. That's how you pull them in. And we're going to save this, and then we're going to get to work. So let's go ahead and give our project a theme by going to option or project and then options. Once this pulls up, we are going to look around for a theme that's suitable for this. Let's go to appearance, and we'll just do Windows 11 Modern Dark. That sounds good to me. So now what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and design our graphical interface. Let's begin with the caption of the main form. We're going to call this Delphi Webcam Example. Um, and then we are going to need an image. So we're going to grab a T image component, slap it down on the form. Uh, the purpose of this is obviously to show the webcam image. And I'm going to put it to about maybe like right here. I'm going to pull this over. And that looks pretty nifty to me, I suppose. We're also going to do a save dialog box because we're going to be able to have the ability to save our images. And I'll show you guys that a little bit later on. So let's pull this down. Now we're going to need ourselves a combo box to show the webcam drivers that we're going to be able to pull from Microsoft Windows. And we're going to drag that to about right there. And then we're going to grab ourselves a button. So then we're going to put the button down and make it line up, make it nice and tidy. Caption of the button needs to be start by default. Also, the button needs to be default setting. So it's the first one to get clicked if you press enter or return or whatever you want to call it. The caption of this can be changed to, uh, we'll just put select webcam driver and it'll just be a placeholder, so it's basically just nothing to it. And then we're going to have the save button, which is just another button, which we're going to drag right down here like so, and drag it across. So now then, uh, let's go ahead and just put that right there, and then change the caption of this button to save current webcam frame. All right. So guys, that's pretty much it. That's our graphical interface designed and pretty much ready to roll. Um, let's go ahead and take off these buttons. So make sure that you go to border icons, turn off minimize and maximize. Only the system menu should remain so we can still close the program. And then we're going to change this uh, to where we can only si uh, it's only going to be a single size so the user can't drag and drop stuff like that. So there you have it. Um, now, what we're going to do now is we need to um, go ahead and essentially set up our cam driver. Um, we need to lock on to the vframes and vsamples files and, and pull some of the procedures and stuff that are already written for us. So let's go ahead and just get started from top to bottom. Essentially, uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is create some public globalized variables, and we're just going to need two of them to run this whole program, which is really, really fucking cool. Makes it super, super freaking simple, right? So we're going to have CAM, which stands for webcam, right? And it is a T video image type, which is declared in vframes and vsamples 
So now we're going to need a string list. So let's just do str lst for string list, and it's a t string list. So now that we have that, we can come on down here and on our event of our form create event procedure. So say that when we first start the program, something is going to happen here, right? So we're going to firstly make an i as an integer variable, and we're also going to um, actually hang on, guys. Let me let's just make this a lot simpler. I can make this simpler. Let's just do for the cam uh, for the form create. Um, we need to first of all initialize our string list. And you know what, guys? Yeah, we'll just go ahead and do that. We'll just do i as an integer, and then we'll do a string list as a t string list. So now that we have actually uh, created these, um, let's go ahead. Let's just use our global one for this. Be a lot better and then we can go ahead and get started. So we have to initialize our string list that we created in our public uh, declarations. So we have to say the string list is uh, gonna be equivalent to creating a T string list. So there you have it. Now we've created our string list. Now we have to create a cam. So cam is from now on gonna be referred to a T video image dot create. We have to initialize that variable as well. Then we're going to get the list of drivers. So it's just simply cam.get list of devices, and we're going to do this into our string list. So we're putting all the webcam drivers on our entire computer into our string list, which we've now initialized, and we'll be able to look through them and uh, do stuff with them, right? And I'm going to show you guys, because on the form here, we're going to stuff those into this combo box, which we also need to change. We're going to change its um, its drop down uh, style. We're going to put this to a drop down list. It's going to look a lot better that way. So back into the code. So let me control D this, make it look a little better. So we have an I integer, uh, which is going to be used for localized looping. And then we have created a string list, which we're going to hold webcam driver names inside of. We've created our camera, uh, and it's a, a T video image, which we're creating from V frames and V samples. And then we're telling camera to pull the list of device drivers and stuff them into our string list so we can loop them and stuff like that. So now that we actually have our uh, list and whatnot, we're going to come down here and we are going to go ahead and clear out our combo box. So let's say that the combo box one dot clear, then we're gonna come down and we're gonna loop four I is equal to we're going to do zero, two, a high of, uh, and this needs to be uh, to the high of our string list count. So the it'll be the high of our uh, webcam list, uh, drivers list, if you will. So we're going to do string list dot count minus one. Now we're going to come down and we're going to put begin, and we're going to start looping in here. So we're going to put combo box one dot items dot add, and we're going to add our string list index that we're currently looped over, and that's going to be that. Then we're going to set. Uh, so once uh, once we've added all of our items into that, uh, so we're taking uh, the list and we're looping through all of our webcam devices. So say if you had like more than one or two webcams installed in your system, it would grab all the drivers, throw them in the combo box from our list. And then we want to um, set the combo box to be equivalent to the first item that it needs to be selected on. Because if you loop through all your webcam drivers and nothing's here, that's kind of stupid because then that makes the user have to like click this and like select a webcam driver before they can even click start, which is just retarded. So what I'm going to do to remedy this, I'm just simply going to say combo box one dot item index is equivalent to zero, which is the first web cam driver available. And then we're going to come down and we're going to cam.free. We're going to free our cam because we no longer require it at this point in time. Because this, this whole deal is just getting us set up. It's just 
getting the drivers, putting them in the combo box, and then freeing our camera because we no longer require it. Because we're not starting the capture yet. We're just looping through real fast, like instantly to grab all the webcam stuff and throw it onto our combo box right here. So now we're going to do the start button. So the start button <coughs> is actually going to function as both a start and a stop button. So to do this, we're going to come in here and we're going to say if self.button1.caption is not stop, then we can begin doing something here. Else, begin doing something down here. So I've just created us a nice little if then else statement structure here. And what we'll do is say the string list is going to be equivalent to um, a t string list dot create. And then what we're going to do is, um, actually, we're going to erase that. We already had that. Not needed. We're going to do cam is equivalent to a t video image dot create. And then we're going to say to get the uh, list of drivers. So let me rethink about this for a second here, guys. We can do this a lot easier than this. Yeah, this is going to be a lot easier than, than doing all this. We're just going to create the cam like we did already right here. And then we're going to come down and we're going to say um, to set the display canvas. So cam.setDisplayCanvas to the image1.canvas property of our image component. So this is where the image, uh, uh, this is where the webcam image will show up. So then after that, we can just go cam.video start. Uh, there it is, and the device name. And the device's name will actually be combo box one dot text, which is the current webcam text of the driver that we have selected. Then we're going to set the self, uh, let's just do button one dot caption is going to be equal to stop. And then we're going to set um, the button one. So we'll set the button two dot enabled to true. Now this uh, this enables the saving button, so the user uh, can save webcam frames to their hard disk drive or SSD, whatever. And that's that. Else down here, so so you guys get this. If if uh, if the caption is not stop, that means it starts. So we're going to start capturing and doing stuff here, right? But if we're not going to start, then that means we're going to stop. So down here on the else statement, we're going to say self.button1.caption is equal to start. And then we're going to say cam.video stop. And then we're going to free the cam. And then we're going to say button2.enabled is also false because we don't want to be able to save. Can't save if the webcam is not streaming. So then at this point, we can also do a little extra cleanup. I'm going to do image one dot picture dot nil, or uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say the picture property is equal to nil rather to clear it out. So we know nothing's happening. It's just kind of a little, you know, graphical thing to show us what's going on. Uh, so guys, let's, uh, let's go back, change the filter type for our save dialogue, because we only want it to be able to uh, both see and save as PNG. So let's go to the filter, double click. Here's the filter window. The filter name will be PNG files, and the filter will be anything.png. And we're going to hit OK on that. Now the file name, which is default, we're just going to put webcamframe dot png all right and that's that so now when we click on this button here to save we want to write the code if self dot save dialog dot execute so if it executes properly or all the way then we're going to be able to do something with our code here and we're going to simply say self dot uh, image one dot picture dot save to file uh, self dot save dialog one dot file name and that's it. That is literally the code. We're done. 
So at this point, we should be good to give it a run and a test. Let's uh, let's pop out of here <clears throat> just real quick and see if we can do just that. So let's go to position and make sure that this is in the center of our screen when I execute this. I'm going to save and run that. And we're going to see if we get any errors, which we did. Let's see. Ah, I forgot a unit. Um, there's also this unit right here, guys, which I failed to mention in the beginning of the video. So well, we have uh, two units. Uh, we have our V frames and our V samples, but we have to also have this other unit that this gentleman created in order for those to work. So let me go ahead and uh, try to pull that up real quick in his example. And I'm going to drag it on over to ours so we can actually use that as well. So that is going to be... All right, guys, I went ahead and stuffed that in there. So now that problem is fixed. So now we can run our program and actually test it. So now let's go ahead and just see if uh, if I did this correctly. So it looks like I've got one webcam installed, which is the C922 Pro streaming cam. I'm going to go ahead and hit start and see what happens. And it looks like it is actually working. So you can see, oh, very nice, very nice. And uh, then we can try to stop it. And as you can see, it does work. So I'm going to try to start it up again. And then I'm going to show you, ooh, la, 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 look. Look, I chew my fingernails. See that, guys? That is very bad hygiene. You don't eat that. Okay, so I'm going to save this. And we're going to call this webcam frame to the desktop. Save. And the image is actually on my desktop. I know you guys can't see this, but I'll uh, stop the capture. And then I'll open the webcam frame image, and you'll see that it's just an image right here. So there you have it. Uh, and that's how you do it, guys. It's literally that simple. Um... You guys can enhance this example if you would like. Like you can pull it down and you can make it to where you can choose the resolution of the camera and all sorts of stuff. Uh, basically, you'll just want to look through V frames. It's a really large file, but if you look down through here, uh, there's class types available for changing the the gamma, the brightness, the contrast, hue, saturation, sharpness, all this stuff. And you can also change the size. I'm not entirely sure where he put that, but it's in here and it's really not that difficult. Uh, you just make a simple call and you can change the uh, the resolution of the cam. So that way it, it like zooms out to the proper amount, et cetera, et cetera. But in any case, that's, that's it guys. Here, I'll give it one more run and just let you guys see. I'm gonna, it automatically selects the first driver because we told it to encode. So then I'm gonna hit start. And then you can see my hand moving around, la 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 la. There you go, real nice and smooth for streaming. And you can actually take this and multi-thread the absolute crap out of it. And when you do multi-thread it, you can basically create a streaming application to send that the, the imagery from the webcam over a socket connection at extremely high rate of speeds and it'll look like a video, really nice stuff. Just make sure you use a really nice uh, multi-threaded socket library to do that with, and it'll be really smooth sailing for you. If you wanted to make like a, you know, like your own little private version of Skype or something between you and a friend or you and several people, um, you can use web sockets to mass bulk, rapidly send that out to, you know, 100 people if you wanted to. Make your own streaming system if you wanted to. But anyway, that's it. This is the example, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you in the next video. Peace out, guys. Later.